Date, triple question mark. Time, triple question mark. Location, triple question mark. Who could that be at this time of night? Yes, Edgeworth speaking. Edgy, get up, it's an emergency. Huh? Larry? Do you know what time it is? It's not Larry, it's Larice. Larice Junim. This is nothing more than a terrible nightmare. I'll just roll over and... Wait, don't hang up. It's an emergency. It's Nick. He, he, he took a really nasty spill. Well, it wouldn't be the first time, so... I'm not joking, his life is in danger. What? What happened? Tell me. Talk about a guy with bad luck, he may already be dead. Anyway, you've got to come back. You're the only one that can help. My Iris, my beautiful Iris, she needs help. Alright, I don't know what's going on, but I'll be there as soon as I can. I'm at the detention centre, please, hurry! It's been one year since I left that country. I thought I wouldn't have to see him again for a while. Sounds like it won't be a pretty reunion, as if I expected anything to change. February 8th, 2.19pm, Detention Centre, Visitor's Room. You're late, Edgy, what took you so long? I don't want to hear it. I chartered a private jet to come as quickly as I could. Well, you should have chartered, chartered a faster one. Anyway, just listen. Something happened to Miss Elise, and Nick is Maya, and Iris is Bikini. Uh huh? Say something, Edgy. Before I came here, I stopped by the hospital and paid Bright a visit. I believe I have a better understanding of the situation than you at this point. The murder victim was the picture book author, Miss Elise Dunim. She was found by Wright and they had none. The suspect is the temple's younger nun. Then later, while Wright was crossing the bridge, it broke and he fell into the river. The hospital says that he'll need at least two days of bed rest. Y yes, that that's right. You got it. B but they arrested her. My sweet little Iris. And here I was, convinced he was the one the police had arrested. However, I still don't understand what these two items are for. What are you talking about? They're things Wright gave to me when I was leaving his room. This is the first. He said some nonsense about being able to see into people's hearts with this. And the other. He couldn't possibly be asking what I think he is, could he? I'm begging you, Iris's trial starts tomorrow. With Nick out of the picture, you're all I've got left. The only one that can represent her. What did you just say? You know, represent, defend, what are you expecting? Why do you think I called you anyway? I'm a prosecutor, Larry. A prosecutor. Do you understand what I'm saying? A prosecutor is a lawyer who... Don't talk to me like a kid. I graduated from junior high, you know? Don't worry about it. I promise I won't tell. But I... I mean, I heard a paper badge had a problem fooling an entire court before. How could this country's judicial system have fallen to such decay? Please, Edgy. At least listen to her. Listen to Iris's side of the story. So Wright wasn't joking when he gave me this badge after all. Thank you for coming. My name is Iris. Edgeworth. Miles Edgeworth. I don't know if I can be of any help, but... I will at least hear what you have to say about the murder. Um... Mr. Wright, it, it, how is he? Mr. Larice said that he... that he might even die. Fortunately, he'll be fine. Larry, you moron. How could you say something like that? He was badly bruised when he hit the water, but otherwise he is unharmed. Thank goodness. But he's caught some kind of nasty cold. A cold? He's running a high fever and is drifting in and out of consciousness. I must be imagining things. This woman, I feel like I've met her before. So yeah, we are playing as Miles Edgeworth at the moment. You'll notice that Edgeworth is not in our, our profiles, that's because we're him. Um, and yeah, we are playing as Miles Edgeworth, and that's what you get to do in this case. <laughs> Pardon me, Iris, I would like to ask you something, if you don't mind. I have the distinct feeling you and I have met before. It must be your imagination, Mr. Edgeworth. After all, I hardly ever leave Harzakura Temple. 
Hazakura Temple? What's that? It's a place where those who wish to boost their spiritual power come to train. You need to undergo some very difficult training to release your inner spiritual power. Spiritual power? Did you go to that temple for that reason as well? No, I don't have any spiritual powers. I don't need them. In that case, what are you doing at that temple then? I... I've committed some sins. Sins that I need to pay for. That's why I'm there, and why I continue to train, to purify my soul. I want to ask you about last night, the night of the crime. Alright. I helped you clean up after dinner, and then we went back to my room at about 8 o'clock. Later I left my room to ring the lights up bell at 10. Bell? We ring it at the same time each night. I see. And then? Uh, and then... I was told to go to the training hall, but... I went back to my room and stayed there. Why didn't you go to the training hall like you were asked to? I was frightened. Frightened? So I just stayed in my room and meditated until the murder happened. There's more to her story. I just know there is. Maybe I should dig a little deeper. You asked to go to the training hall the night of the murder? Yes. However, you didn't go. Because you say you were frightened. What exactly were you so frightened of? Oh, what in the world? Um, is there something wrong? I'm sorry, it's nothing. Looks like she's not aware of them herself. These must be what Wright was talking about. The Psycholocks. I believe he said that I need to present this Magatama item to do something. So do you have any idea as to what really occurred last night? I think it was the result of the tremendous spiritual power that was unleashed. Spiritual power? Yes, spiritual training has been a cause behind many great tragedies. This incident was just another example. Iris, I'm sorry, but I can't accept that. I'm a man of science. I don't believe in spiritual power. Um, okay, Edgeworth. Yes, I understand. Most people don't. And I am certain that the thing that killed the victim was a human. So please, answer me this simple question. Were you the one who killed Elise Dunim? No. I'm not the one who took her life. Hmm... Those psycholock things aren't appearing. I suppose that means I can believe that she's not lying. Huh. <laughs> What's wrong? I can't believe what I'm thinking. And here I just finished saying that I don't believe in spiritual power. Hmm. It appears that's about all you can tell me. Thank you very much for listening to my story. I visited Wright at the hospital before coming here. He asked me to take care... Take care of you. M me? Yes. At the trial tomorrow, he asked me to defend you. If Mr. Wright has that much faith in you, Mr. Edgeworth then I will gladly entrust my fate to your capable hands. Before that, I have one question. Yes? Do you know right? Uh, why would you ask that? Whenever you came up in our conversation, he would begin to act a little... strange. Mr. Edgeworth, what is Mr. Wright to you? He is a very dear and indispensable friend. It was five years ago. That's when I... That's when I... deceived him. You deceived him? I heard that he was in a lot of pain afterwards because of what happened. I know what a weak person I am. That's why... that's why I thought it was best if he never saw me again. I wanted him to just forget about me without learning the truth. Well, if you ask me, Wright is still suffering. And until he learns the truth, I don't think he will ever be able to truly recover. Iris, it's not too late. You should go to him. Tell him the truth. I mean, you're, you're, you're in detention, but when you get out of detention, go to him. <laughs> I'll defend you, but only if you agree to that one condition. Alright, Mr. Edgeworth. I promise. Very well. I'll do everything in my power to get you an acquittal. That's enough information gathering for now. I should head to the crime scene.
I believe we can't open the Psyche Lock just yet. Uh, so we'll just head out. February 8th, Dusky Bridge. It sure is cold, alright. So this is it, Dusky Bridge. Oh wow, it's you, Mr. Edgeworth. Mm. Detective Gumshoe. Long time no see. It's been about a year? Or has it been longer? It doesn't matter, Detective. What, do, what does matter is why you're shuffling around up here. Oh, ouch! And there's that sharp left jab. Well, I'm happy to see you anyway, Mr. Edgeworth. Let me guess. You were transferred by HR to the local precinct? A wise decision. The vast amount of nothing up here should be quite easy to guard. I heard you were back in this country and arranged to come all the way out here. Everybody was real nice. They even let me take charge of the investigation, sir. Gumshoe indeed. Like gum on your shoe. He's impossible to get rid of. I'm supposed to report on the details of the crime scene, sir. Anyway, here I am, Detective Dick Gumshoe, reporting for duty. Great. Um, thank you, Detective. I thought Prosecutor Gotto was going to get here before me. That guy's a real mystery, I tell you. Prosecutor Gotto? I just got back into the country, so I don't really know much about the case. It's simple. Well, simple as a simple does, as they say. Oh, you've got no idea how much I've missed that biting sarcasm of yours, sir. But seriously, this one's a piece of cake. There's a witness that saw the whole thing. A witness? Yeah, that bikini lady. Bikini lady? Here? On this freezing cold mountain? Well, you should talk to her yourself if you want the details, sir. I may have to talk to this bikini lady. I mean, decisive witness, myself. So this is the bridge that Wright fell through? Yup, can't imagine being that reckless myself. Look before you cross, is how it goes, right? Or was that leap? And? Is there something on the other side? Yeah, some old building they call the Inner Temple. But we can't get over there without a bridge, sir. What? Nobody lives there, so it's usually not a problem. But someone was at the Inner Temple doing some training, and now they're stuck there. Yes, I heard that from Wright. It's Maya Faye. Oh no, her again? Anyway, the air's really turbulent right now, so we can't do an aerial extraction. No one's going to be able to reach the Inner Temple until tomorrow, so... We should be alright in this cold. So how did this bridge burn down, anyway? We're almost 100% sure it was lightning. Lightning? So who is this prosecutor Gotto? I've never heard of him. Yeah, he's a new guy. Shut up after you left the country. He's a complete rookie, but nobody can say a bad word about the guy. What kind of a man is he? He just became a prosecutor recently, but he's good, sir. Real good. If he's so good, how is it that I've never heard of him? Is he the lead prosecutor on this case? You bet he is. After all, you know who is right in the middle of it. You know who? Phoenix Fry, of course. For some reason, Gotto has really got it in for Mr. Wright. Oh? Yeah, he seems to have some kind of a grudge. And what would the co be the cause of this grudge? I don't know. Maybe he made fun of his mask or something? None of this is making any sense. I better look into this Gotto myself. You're telling me that the bridge caught on fire due to a fluke bolt of lightning? Yup. Last night it snowed for the first time in three days. It's a little unusual for lightning to occur during a snowfall like that. But according to the weather, weather data, lightning definitely struck. Weather data added to the court record. Hmm, I see. This is a very detailed weather report. Almost too detailed. It even has the exact time the lightning struck the bridge. Oh, that? We got that information from the witness's testimony. Someone actually saw the lightning hit the bridge? Who is this witness? Sorry, I'll go ask one of the local cops later, sir. Huh? What's that thing doing in your lapel, Mr. Edgeworth? Is it really that odd? You bet it is, sir. A prosecutor wearing a defense attorney's badge? That's like a detective with a license to kill. Does this little thing hold that ominous of a meaning? Have you ever seen this thing before? Hey, thanks a lot. I was getting kind of hungry. What are you doing, detective? Ack! I thought it was some kind of candy that would fill me up, sir. 
Lately, I've been feeling so hungry all the time. Mm, maybe his salary's been cut just a little too much? I usually hear about promising young prosecutor candidates while they're still in school. But I've never seen or heard of this person. I gotta admit, he's puzzling alright. He disappeared one day, big mug of steaming coffee in his hand. Hmm, sounds like an interesting man. Yeah, the whole prosecutor's office is really into double espresso macchiatos lately. <laughs> February 8th, Hazakura Temple, Main Gate. Yo, Edgy, what took you so long? I'm so cold my brain's turned to sherbet. I knew it was a mistake to race back to this country. Oh, what do you mean? Right is going to be fine, and the case itself isn't anything unusual. And I find myself taking a request to defend a woman accused of murder. Uh, hey, wait a sec. Hold it. Objection. What's going on here, Mr. Edgeworth? Um, it's hard to explain, but one thing led to another, and... What kind of lame excuse is that? You call yourself a defense attorney? Prosecutor Edgeworth is a prosecutor, and that's why he's Prosecutor Edgeworth. Prosecutor Edgeworth defense attorney sounds plain old weird, pal. Right, Prosecutor Edgeworth? I'm not sure what role I'm supposed to be playing anymore. Hmm, <laughs> dude, edgy. I don't see you for a couple of years and your heart turns to sherbet. I'd say more like sorbet. It is rather cold here. Iris didn't murder her, someone else did it. I just know it, okay? So trust me on this one. Ever the romantic, aren't you, Larry? Nevertheless, I'll do whatever I can to prove her innocence. At least until I pass the baton on to Wright, that is. Man, I'm telling you, Iris is so cute. Right, Edgy? You think so too, don't you? What's wrong? Why are you so quiet? To put it simply, your comment has me highly concerned. Could it be that the reason you think she's innocent? Come on, a girl that cute can't possibly be a murderer. I was right after all. I should never have come back. No, no, don't worry. I see things for how they really are this time, honest. If I had a penny for every time he said that. It's just that, well, Iris is a delicate flower. You can't force things too much, you know what I mean? Huh? I have no idea what you're talking about, Larry. Oh. Ah, uh, forget it. I didn't say anything. Larry, where were you and what were you doing on the night of the crime? Larry? What? Don't tell me. You think I might have done it? What? Get lost. Go back on your childhood jet and get out of my sight, you creep. And I hope your plane crashes and you die. I'll ask just one more time. On the night of the murder, where were you and what were you doing? As I suspected, psycholocks. I'm sorry man, you know me, I just don't remember. My short term memory is a wreck, dude. I suppose this type of thing is necessary up here in the mountains. Say, this just gave me a great idea. Something tells me he's going to tell me what's on his mind, whether I like it or not. I've got an idea for a brand new invention. It might even make me rich. An invention? Yeah, a car that can travel in snow. I call it a snow car. So what do you think, sir? Would you go for a ride on something like that? Only after you take the first 1,000 test rides. Hazakura Temple Main Hall. <sighs> hey, hello there. Um, so how are you feeling? Alright, I suppose. Huh? Who is this? I. my name is Miles Edgeworth. My, my, my. A handsome boy such as yourself is always welcome. <sighs> if circumstances weren't so tragic, I might just. Please don't call me boy. I'm sorry to trouble you but I'm looking for a woman in a bikini. Well, you've found her. Now, what can I do for you? I'm sorry, but I don't see any bikinis. Ha <laughs> you ask nicely, I might give you a peek, big boy. Whoa! Uh, Mr. Edgeworth? This is the head nun, Sister Bikini. She's the witness. Why didn't you tell me that earlier? 
This is exactly why your salary keeps on getting cut. Mm, my stomach is already growling in protest. So, um, what's the latest about my beloved Iris? Well, first, I want to hear what you know. First, I'd like to ask you about last night. Well, last night, we had an acolyte here for training. After dinner, the two of us went to the training hall in the inner temple. She must be talking about Maya. Approximately what time was that? I suppose it was about nine when we left here? Training lasts all night long. It's extremely exhausting. The channeling dojo's head nun must be in attendance at all times to keep watch. Wow, you're right. That does sound exhausting. Detective, this is no time for flattery. Sorry. Sometime around 11, you witnessed the incident in the courtyard. But your duty was in the inner temple. Why did you come back here? Hmm, the way you're staring at me, I'm starting to get goosebumps. <laughs> mm, I'm starting to get goosebumps myself for, for, for a decidedly different reason. Oh, you get the chills pretty easy, don't you, Mr. Edgeworth? Alright then, I'd like you to tell me exactly what you saw in the courtyard. It must have been past 11. Ah, uh, no, I can't say it. it. It's too much for my poor heart. Hey, calm down, lady. Let go of my tie. I saw two people. One of them was lying on the ground. The, the other one was stabbing her from the back with a sword. Did you see this criminal with your own eyes? I didn't want to believe what I was seeing, but it was Iris. You must have been quite shocked. Of course she was. Try putting yourself in her shoes. It'd be like if you were stabbing Mr. Wright smack in the middle of a courtroom. And I happened to witness it from the witness stand. I'd be pretty shocked too. I know it sounds insane, but that's what I saw. And when I finally realized what I was seeing, I screamed, and then I passed out. Unfortunately for us, her testimony seems to be pretty solid. However, the idea of Iris doing such a foul act seems unnatural. Unnatural? The girl I know simply isn't capable of this sort of foulness. I wonder what she means by that. As the head nun, it's your duty to stay with the acolyte at all times, correct? Yes, that's correct. I know I may look strong, but the truth is, I've got a bad lower back. A bad lower back? Yes, it's especially bad in the winter. So bad that I can't even lift a bucket. Do you remember how cold it was last night? My bad back felt as stiff as frozen glass. I just wanted to take a nice hot bath to ease my aching back. That's why I returned to the main hall. So you left the disciple all alone? Don't be ridiculous, I would never do that. That's why I ordered Iris to the inner temple after she had rung the bell for lights out. Yes, but she never went to the inner temple, did she? So did this head nun actually see Iris there? I think I'd better try to get some more details. So who is this acolyte that was to train at the inner temple? Her name is Maya Faye. I treated her very badly, I'm ashamed to say. And after she went through the trouble of signing up for the special course. A special course? It's a training session where you sit on a block of spirit ice and chant 30,000 times. You don't mean to tell me she's still doing that over at the inner temple, do you? No, 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 of course not. You don't have to worry about that one little bit. That one little bit. Last night, we still hadn't started the training session itself. Well, um, that's good to hear. Oh, dear, dear. There's one thing I forgot to tell you. Uh-oh. I don't think I like the sound of this. Do you know that small girl? I believe she is Mystic Maya's little sister. Maya has a little sister? Oh, you mean little Pearl. That's Maya Faye's cousin. Little... Pearl? I thought she was going to visit Mystic Elise after we finished with dinner, dinner cleanup, but I haven't seen her at all since late last night. She's nowhere to be found. Y you mean she, she was with the victim? It's all the fault of my stupid, creaky old back. A little girl who was with the victim on the night of the murder is gone. As they say, the plot thickens. Uh... To know some more about Iris. You said you went with Maya to the training hall in the inner temple last night. Did you happen to see Iris while you were there? Of course I saw her. I told her to meet us after ringing the 10 o'clock bell for lights out. So 
So you're saying Iris came to the inner temple then? Of course she did. Iris has always been a good, obedient girl. After that, I had Iris help Mystic Maya begin her training. But that doesn't fit with Iris' story at all. She said that she never went to the inner temple. As they say, the plot thickens. Hmm. Hmm. February 8th, Hazakura Temple Courtyard. And this is where the murder took place, sir. Other than removing the body, we left everything else untouched. Thanks, detective. I'll just have a look around. It looks like the police are still investigating. Oh yeah, by the way, I thought I'd better ask, just to be sure. Are you really going to defend that nun, Harris, at the trial tomorrow? Yes, I will. I gave her my word, and now I must follow through with my commitment. Well, in that case, I've got to be careful. Got to make sure I don't leak the prosecution's whole investigation. Don't worry about it, detective. Just keep your mouth closed, and I think most of it will flow out on its own. You got it, sir. I'll make sure it flows out like water from a tap. Y yes, you do that, detective. Just how much has your runny spout leaked over the years? There aren't any clues here. Instead of saying no clues here, Edgeworth says there aren't any clues here. Very different. <laughs> What's this? It looks like a wizard's staff. That belonged to the victim, Miss Elise Dunim. There's nothing strange or magical about it. Oh yeah, listen, this is just between us, okay sir? Yes. What? This is top secret stuff, don't tell anyone about this. Alright. The truth is, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a wizard. That's it? That's what you wanted to tell me? That's it. This staff was made from a very strong kind of wood. What about fingerprints? Were there any on it? Just the victims. Victim staff added to the court record. The main gate must be just over that stone wall. Ah, stone walls. I jumped over a few of those in my time. Most of them are good memories, but not all. Detective, perhaps someone should introduce you to the concept of paucity of words. Shall I look at the stepladder? So the sword from this gold statue is actually the murder weapon? It sure is. It's called a Shichishito, by the way. Nasty piece of work, sir. There's still blood on it. I suppose this is the victim's blood? Yup, it's all over the blade. And speaking of all over the blade, there are fingerprints all over the hilt of the Shichishito -shi too. Fingerprints? Naturally they match the prints we got from the, from the younger nun, the defendant. Her fingerprints are on the murder weapon? What's wrong? You're looking really solemn. Is this how it is for right? Is this what it's like to be a defense attorney? Yeah, I think it doesn't feel really good. To be honest, it feels more like it's detrimental to your health. Sheet you see to add to the court record. There's not much else to look at here. February 8th, Hazakura Temple, Main Gate. Hmm, I don't see Larry anywhere. Maybe we scared the poor kid away. His heart was shut tight with a number of psycho locks. I guess I'll have to look for, look for him now. What a thorn in my side. I love the way Edgeworth thinks, it's great. <laughs> uh... It looks like Iris is being interrogated right now. This place certainly brings back memories. Oh yeah, come to think of it, you got thrown in here once too, didn't you sir? But you know what? I've never been in jail a single time. I should think it's hard to land in jail when you're so harmless. Yes, well, if you're in jail, you don't have to pay for your own meals, you know? <gasps> don't get any funny ideas, detective. Too late, I already did. In any case, I guess I'll have to come back here later. Look, I'm just your everyday simple detective. Don't ask me such tough questions, okay? That's not something to be proud of, detective. So 
little shack down that way called Heavenly Hall. A shack? It's like a rundown doghouse for losers that can't bear the freezing draughts of wind. Kinda reminds me of my apartment, sir. The name Heavenly Hall makes it sound like a palace. Giving a hovel a great name is a crime itself. I call it false advertising. By the way, the name of my apartment complex is Compton Castles. That's not such a great name if you ask me. Well, it's not such a great apartment either, sir. Um, about this here. Hmm, let me see. Well, as you may know, in order to see reality for what it truly is, we strive to break our attachments to much of the transient material realm. I guess you could call me an immaterial girl. I guess she lives in an immaterial world, huh, Mr. Edgeworth? There aren't any clues here, but there are just there. There are more ends of cushions in the corner of the room. What's that white piece of paper sticking out from under that stack? Hmm, beats me. Would you mind checking that for me, Detective Gumshoe? Y yes, sir. Here you are, Mr. Edgeworth. It looks like an old manila envelope. Yeah. What is it, Detective? Th this. This could be it. An ultra-important clue. A super special clue. I suppose I should read it myself, then. Looks like a letter addressed to Sister Iris. Tonight at ten at Heavenly Hall, unless you want your secret to be exposed. Th this sounds like a blackmail letter. Note to Iris added to the court record. Nice going there, Mr. Edgeworth. Why can't I ever find clues like that? You're an ultra-important prosecutor, a super-duper prosecutor. Well, I suppose it takes a super-duper kind of dumb to miss a clue like this. To Iris of Hazagura Temple, salutation here. There is something I must talk to you about. I'll be waiting for you tonight at 10 at Heavenly Hall. Make sure you come, unless you want your secret to be exposed. So yeah, that's an important clue. Uh, that may be all we need to take back to Iris at the detention center? I'm not sure. No, not yet. Hey, it's public phone. You don't see a lot of these anymore. That's true. Since we've got one here, why don't we take a photo as a memento? Well, um, sure, why not? Oh, darn it, I have a camera with me. I'm gonna go buy a disposable camera. I'll be right back, sir. What's so special about public phones, and why is he so fascinated by them? So this is the bridge Wright tried to cross? Pretty reckless, if you ask me. I'm amazed he survived the fall from up here. Yeah, he's one lucky guy, sir. Now I see how he manages to win his cases in court. Blind luck. I think dumb luck suits Wright just a little bit better. Uh, need. I think we have all the main clues. What am I missing? Spoke to you about everything. What do you know about the victim? Oh! How could such a terrible thing have happened? It's all. It's all. It's all my fault! Well, come on, lady. I don't think you need to take all the blame yourself. Quiet. What do you know, anyway? Ouch. You're scary. With that stupid five o'clock shadow and that stupid old coat of yours, it's too bad that you weren't the one who disappeared. Why does she have to take it all out on me? Her anger does seem a little manufactured. Hmm. Oh, this poor girl. Where could she have gone? Well, we checked out her home and she's not there. And she's nowhere in the vicinity of the temple either. Which means... There's only a few other possibilities as to where she could be. Ah, do you think maybe she fell off the bridge and was carried downstream? Why do you have to be such a pessimist, Detective? I was just trying to think like you, Mr. Edgeworth. Ironic. I became a pessimist only after I had the pleasure of working with you. This man, his face betrays a life of suffering and great weariness of the world. Um, sure. But, even so, I can't believe this guy actually jumped into the river. 
Think of all the fun things he might have enjoyed if he had just lived. Relentless spiritual training alone is no way to lead a complete life, huh? It sounds like she's got some major regrets she's dealing with. Hmm, perhaps I should let Gumshoe explain Wright's situation to her for me. Uh, hey, don't look at me like that. Do your own dirty work, sir. <laughs> um... Do you know anything about this old crumpled up letter? Is that addressed to Iris? Yep, it clearly says to Iris on it. I can't believe it. That girl doesn't have any secrets from me. Ah, uh, so Sister Bikini didn't know anything about it. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I tried that already. I can't quite remember how to get through this investigation segment. Well, well, well. That's a demon warding hood. Acolytes are highly susceptible to possession by evil spirits, you know? That's why we always wear these for protection. Oh, I see. What are you waiting for? You don't get any protection just by holding it, you know? Put it on already. No, I can't. I was just... <laughs> oh, 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 oh. It's like it was made just for you, Mr. Edgeworth. What do you mean by that, detective? Looks absolutely marvelous. You just gotta keep it on for a while. Is this some sort of divine retribution? Oh, it's a warmed cat box. Where are all the cats? It's called a hibachi. It's for heating the room. Oh, look at all these ancient straw frisbees. Those are a type of Zabuton cushions called Enza. Why are you giving me such a hard time? Huh, Mr. Edgeworth? Why? Because learning something new might actually be a good thing for you, detective. Uh, maybe there's some more clues in the courtyard that I missed? And did I, did I talk to Detective Gumshoe out here? I didn't. That's the problem. The victim is the famous picture book author, Miss Elise Dunim. Her entire past up until she won that writing award last year is a total mystery. It's hard to believe in this day and age you can still find people like that. The estimated time of death of the victim was between 10 o'clock and 11, 11, sorry, between 10 and 11 p.m. on February 7th. The cause of death was blood loss resulting from a stab to the back by the murder weapon. The murder weapon? The victim was found skewered with a giant sword, so... That's terrible. Yeah, but there's one strange thing. Yes? The victim's entire body was covered with bruises. The bruises are consistent with falling from the height of a two-story building. A two-story building? That would be about the same height as that room in front of us, correct? Hey, you're right. Way to go, Mr. Edgeworth. That just happens to be the room that Elise Tunin was staying in. Maybe she was pushed out of the window after she was stabbed by the sword? Police is autopsy reported to the court record. Now then, detective. Let's see if we can summarize what we've learned so far. Okay. Let's look at, take a look at the map. According to the testimony of Sister Bikini, sorry, according to the testimony of Sister Bikini, the head nun, right after they'd finished dinner, she and Maya Fey had the inner temple. There they go. <sighs> At 10 p.m. after ringing the bell for lights out, Iris went to the inner temple. When she got there, Bikini had her take over while she went back to Hazakura Temple. After taking a hot bath to soothe her back, Sister Bikini witnessed the murder in the courtyard. If you want more details, you should ask Bikini herself in the main hall. The inner temple, huh? I'd like some more information about that place. The trial begins tomorrow, but who's the prosecutor? I'm pretty sure it's that Goto guy, but... Nobody can get a hold of him, so they're looking for a replacement. What do you mean? It's really weird, all of a sudden no one can reach him. Hmm, I wonder if the rumours are true. Maybe since Mr. Wright caught a cold and won't be defending, he just lost interest. I intend to appear in court in the role of defence attorney. However, I would be quite unhappy if it came out that I'm actually a prosecutor. Yeah, I can see why, but I'm not the one you have to worry about. 
I think the real problem is gonna be that judge. Yes, he certainly would remember my face, even after such a long absence. That's why I requested that another judge preside over the trial tomorrow. We've only met each other once. There's a good chance he won't remember me at all. Y yeah, but what about the prosecutor? Everyone in the prosecutor's office must know you. Wouldn't it be a problem if someone there made a big stink, sir? There's no need to worry. I pulled a few strings and arranged for a prosecutor of my own choosing. Wow, Mr. Edgeworth. I had no idea it was such a powerful string to pull. What is this inner temple that Maya was supposedly training at? According to Bikini, it's an old building they use for training the acolytes. It's on the other side of Dusky Bridge. The bridge that burned down, huh? Is there anything else on that side of, on the other side of the bridge besides the inner temple? Nope, not a thing. Nothing? The other side is surrounded by cliffs on all sides. In a way, it's kind of like a little island out there. So the only thing there is the inner temple. I hear it's not the kind of place a person could survive in. Please be alright, Maya. Okay, uh, so we have an autopsy report now, which is something we were missing before. Possible that's all we need? I'm not quite sure. Nope, wrong direction. Try to guess who the prosecutor's gonna be, by the way. We won't see them until next video, so... February 8th, Detention Centre, Visitor's Room. Ah, Mr. Edgeworth. I came back because I need to ask you a few more questions, if you don't mind. But I... I've already told you everything that I... Iris, please remember. I'm on your side. You can tell me anything. Y yes thank you. I just finished speaking with the head nun of Hazakura Temple. She testified very clearly as to what happened. She said she saw you stab Miss Elise Dunim with a sword. And one other thing. She said that when Maya Faye began her training at the Inner Temple, you were there as well. What? When I spoke with you last, you claimed that you never went to the Inner Temple. And yet, Sister Bikini says she met with you at the Inner Temple that very night. B but I... I didn't go there. I didn't go to the Inner Temple last night. Hmm, looks like she's unwilling to tell me the whole truth. I wonder if I'll find the answers I'm looking for if I break those psycho locks. I was frightened. Since I have been handed this case, it is my duty to dig up all the answers. Understand? Y yes, sir. The smallest flame is on his bay the case in a whole new light. In my years in court, I've seen it happen over and over again. That's why I'm committed to searching until I have those answers. Now then, is it really true that you didn't go to the inner temple that night? Last night? Y yes, I swear. I already told you that. Yes, you said you didn't go because you were frightened. That's right. If that's the case, then the obvious question is, what were you so afraid of? Iris, I wonder. Is this what frightened you so much that you couldn't even leave your own room? Is it this blackmail letter? Take that! I found this in the main hall. It is addressed to you. Ah, th that's... Well, Iris? Why... Why are you glaring at me like that? You were scared of the blackmailer who wrote this to you, isn't that correct? Ah. Uh... Was it the evidence or the power of my glare that broke that lock? Oh well, I don't suppose it matters either way. But Mr. Edgeworth? Yes? I thought that letter was just someone playing a prank on me. A prank? Well, yes. After all, even if I did have a secret, there's no one to tell it to that would cause me any grief. Hmm, I wonder about that. Sister Bikini is like a mother to me. I would never hide anything from her. No, you may not have anything to hide under normal circumstances. However, last night was different. Unfortunately, I don't know the exact nature of your secret yet. However, whatever it is, there is one person you didn't want your secret told to. Phoenix Wright. Phoenix Wright. Ah! You mean something to Wright, it seems. 
and I can tell he holds a special place in your heart as well. That's why you didn't want him, of all people, to know your deep, dark secret. Well, what do you have to say? I should have expected as much, especially from a friend of his. Unlock successful. After dinner, this letter was waiting for me in my room. As I said, I was frightened by it. What is this heavenly hall the letter mentions? It's a small mountain shack at the base of Dusky Bridge. A small shack, huh? It's more like a broken down shack that no one would ever want to go near. Hmm. Where is it on this map? It's around here. To get there you must follow a small path down from Dusky Bridge. The reality is, to get to the inner temple I had no choice but to cross that bridge. But the thought that such a terrible criminal could be lurking at Heavenly Hall? I am so scared by the whole affair that I didn't even want to think about it. So this is the secret that you locked away in your heart? Yes. It looks as though I may have to visit this Heavenly Hall now. Maybe I'll find some sign of our mystery blackmailer. In any case, you still claim to have never left your room last night? Yes, that's exactly right. Iris has testimony added to the court record. The trial starts tomorrow. I promise you, I will win. I'm going to win so that you and Phoenix Wright can see each other again. But when I do, you must promise me that you will tell him your secret. But it's pointless. Why would you say that? Because I may know who Phoenix Wright is, but he has no idea who I am. Hmm. Okay, Heavenly Hall. February 8th, Heavenly Hall. Whoa, not much of a view down here, huh? It's still better than the view from my apartment, though. Someone's here. Hide yourself, detective. Oh, why, why, why? Why does this always happen? Whenever I find a girl I like, they always run away. I even chased down one of them to Japan. Next it's gonna be prison, I guess. I'll steal that detective's wallet. That'll get me locked up for sure. Nah, I can't do that to someone who looks like he's down on his luck. He's just talking to himself. Shh, be quiet and listen. I knew it. I shouldn't have done that. I blew it again. Done that? What did he do, I wonder? Hey, you! About what you just said! I got an objection! What the? The edgy? You dirty rat! Gumshoe, you oaf. I'm sorry, sir. Before I knew it, I was shouting out objection. And in a loud, commanding voice, too. I even pointed with my pointer finger. You've watched too many trials. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, Larry, the jig is up. What have you got to say for yourself? Mm. I think this song really does fit Larry quite well. What is this little shack anyway? Well, I just discovered it myself yesterday. And why were you down here in the first place? Uh, come on, I'm an artist. I was looking for a good place to sketch. This is a great little place. It's, uh, artistic. It's quiet, it's cold, it's got no power, and it looks like it's about to collapse. Sounds a lot like my apartment there, pal. One thing's for sure, no one is likely to show up and disturb you here. So can I get you something to drink? Some hot water, maybe? He's getting all buddy-buddy on us, sir. Uh... Listen to me, Edgy. You've got to do this. You've got to save Iris. Why are you so sure she's innocent? Because she's cute? Watch your mouth. Anyway, I've made up my mind about it. I'm going to marry that girl. Um... Mr. Edge was pretending he didn't hear you, so I'm going to ask for him. Have you already asked this girl to marry you? No, no, not yet. But I can tell how she feels by the look in her eyes. She's got this, I really want this man to carry me over the threshold look. I'm sure Nick would be surprised. He never imagined that I could marry such a beautiful girl like that. Something tells me he would be shocked indeed. 
That's why I didn't want her to do anything dangerous. I mean, what am I gonna do if she gets hurt? What is this guy trying to say? He lost me about a mile back. Hmm, if you really want to know the answer to that, we're going to have to drag him onto the witness stand. Come to think of it, you still haven't answered my question. Where were you and what were you doing last night? Oh man, don't you have anything else to talk about? With that kind of attitude, you'll never be a ladies man like me. Okay, okay, chill out with those scary eyes. I got it. If you really want to know, last night, I saw something incredible. Something incredible? Uh, yeah, yeah, but let's not talk about that now. Let's talk about the good old days. What do you say? Come on, I'll pour you a nice cup of hot water. Why hasn't he realised that I absolutely despise talking about the good old days, especially with him? Okay, I think we can break this already. Let's have a look. The night of the crime. Alright, now you're going to tell me what you really saw last night. Well, you're really upset, aren't you, Edgy? Okay, I'll talk. Huh? That was a bit too easy. Yeah, anyway, it was awesome. Never seen anything like it. At around 10 o'clock last night, it started thundering. I'd been sleeping? I'm not sure for how long. Suddenly, zing! The world in front of me went white. Like I'd just been slapped in the face by my old girlfriend Naomi. And then? And then, it was on fire. The bridge was on fire. Dusky bridge caught on fire? Are you saying you saw it with your own eyes? Hey, why are you giving me that evil eye? I'm telling the truth. Hmm, there's still three psycho looks remaining. That means he's still trying to hide something. By the way, Larry, where were you when you saw that happen? Where, you say? What do you mean? What do you mean, what do I mean? Just answer the question. I, I was in my own room, by the main hall. Where else would I be? As usual, you're as transparent as an empty jelly jar. The problem, I suspect, lies there. The, the, there? What do you mean, the, the, there? It's impossible for you to have seen lightning strike Dusky Bridge from your room. Okay, if you look at the map, you can see there's a big old cliff between Hazakura Temple and where the bridge is. This is a map of the area. Take a look around the vicinity of Hazakura Temple. What am I looking for? I think that should be fairly obvious. The main hall is surrounded by trees and it's impossible to see the bridge from here. What? Why didn't you tell me that before? Well, how about it? How about what? Do you feel like talking now? About what? Looks like it won't be that easy after all. You leave me no choice, I'll have to move on to the next step. You weren't in your room at the temple, so then, where were you? Y you don't know that I wasn't in my room. So where was Larry and why was he there? If I've read the situation up to this point correctly, the answer is fairly obvious. Very well then, let's test my theory. The place you witnessed lightning striking Dusky Bridge from was here. It's Heavenly Hall, because you can see it from there. The place you saw the lightning strike from was naturally Heavenly Hall. Why would I be hanging out in this old shack? It's freezing cold, there's no electricity, and it could fall apart at any minute. Larry, how do you know that anyway? How do you know there's no electricity? After all, it's not that dark yet. Uh, uh oh. In other words, you have just provided evidence to prove. You have just provided evidence to prove my theory. My theory that you've at least once in your life visited Heavenly Hall after sunset. Or he tried to charge his phone, like. Come on. I have to admit I'm impressed, Edgy. Sorry, Edgy. You're in a totally different league from Nick. That's nice. Now tell me, what were you doing at this cold little shack last night? That's what you might call a fair de corps. I think you mean a fair de corps. Could it be that you were waiting for someone? Oh no, y you really are one scary guy, you know. I believe that last night you were waiting for this person to come meet you. Iris. 
There's only one person you'd wait for in a horrible place like this, Larry. I told you before. Don't tell me Larry. The person you were waiting for was... Iris. Oh, suddenly I feel cold all over, Edgy. No doubt because of my chilly glare. So you think I got the hot for Sister Iris, huh? D do you have some kind of evidence? You got something that proves I was waiting for her? Or are you just guessing? This is where I draw the line and end this ridiculous little game. Here's the evidence that proves you were waiting for Iris. Uh... It's this, it's the blackmail letter. Larry sent this. Because he's freaking creepy. Here's your evidence. You called her to this spot with a pathetic blackmail letter. Oh, but hey, give that back. You're embarrassing me. What are you doing with that anyway? That's not important. I misjudged you, Larry. What do you mean? Taking advantage of a woman's frailty like that? You should be ashamed of yourself. Oh. Oh. First of all, what's this at the top of the letter? It says salutation here. Well, that's what it said in that book. Letter writing for dummies. You're not supposed to actually write that. That's where you're supposed to write, Dear Iris. Wah! I'm so sorry. Unlock successful. So you were here in Heavenly Hall last night, weren't you, Larry? And you saw the lightning hit Dusky Bridge, didn't you? S sorry, Edgy. Sorry doesn't cut it, you scumbag. Threatening you, threatening you, blah, blah. Threatening a young lady like that? Wait, hold up. What now, pal? What are you talking about? What threatening stuff? I'll tell you what, you tried to scare Iris by expecting, threatening to expose her secret, pal. What do you mean, threaten? When did I threaten her? Unless you want your secret to be exposed? That sure sounds like a threat to me, pal. Blackmail, in fact. Give me a break, it's a love letter. Haven't you ever been in love? What did you just say? My love for her burned so hotly it could melt all the snow on this mountain. Uh, oh, and what is the secret you mentioned? Come on, Edgy. Don't you get it? I'm talking about the secret love between her and me. Obviously she wouldn't want old lady Bikini to know about it, right? About our hot and sour, bittersweet love affair? All right, then why did you send a love letter in a business-like Manila envelope? Give me a break, it's not my fault I didn't have any other envelopes. Yeesh! Then why are you so quick to apologize, pal? It's cause Edgy gave me that scary look of his. What's wrong, Edgy? Why are you so quiet all of a sudden? That's it? That's what all those huge locks were about? I, I don't understand why you were so defensive. Well, I don't know either. I guess the thing is, you shouldn't expect too much from a guy like me. Hey, come on, don't let it get you down. So, Mr. Edgeworth, this guy is still hiding something, I know it. What do you mean, detective? Don't forget what this guy said just a minute ago. If you really want to know, last night, I saw something incredible. Hmm, he's right. Larry. What? You're looking at me like a hungry dog who just found a bone. What was this something incredible you saw last night? You're going to tell me, Larry, one way or another. I already told you, didn't I? I saw lightning strike Dusky Bridge. Yes, and I believe it was the incredible sight you saw. But now that I think about it, something doesn't quite ring true. What doesn't? If that's all there is to your story, your heart wouldn't have had all those locks. Therefore, Larry, I do believe you saw something last night. Something more incredible than lightning. What? When? Where? Why? How? Hey, what do you think you're doing? If you hide anything from Mr. Edgeworth, I'll arrest you on the spot, pal. Ah. Ah. No. No. What's wrong, sir? D does this man have to do it all over again? Why are you glaring at me like I'm next to be hit by a bolt of lightning? I've just about had it with this Harlequin. If I really want to drag the truth out of him, I'll just have to drag him to the witness stand. To be continued.
Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Next time, it's trial time. And yes, Edgeworth decides to end the investigation and go to trial just because he's sick of breaking psyche locks. What a character. <laughs> Thanks for watching, y'all. Uh, thank you for uh, participating. Um, I pretty much said that already. Oh well. Bye! <laughs> oh my goodness.